It's interesting, you know, when the secular media, secularists come to the Creation Museum and they want to interview me, mostly their questions are about the age of the Earth, and mostly they're scoffing. You don't say. And I don't want to point out the obvious, but you don't think that's maybe because it's a completely ridiculous claim to me? So they come here, they don't really ask questions about evolution and what the museum's about. The first thing they do is they say, why do you believe in a young age for the Earth? Why do you believe that dinosaurs lived in recent times and did live millions of years ago? And they're all perfectly reasonable questions. Because when a young Earth creationist makes such a bold claim, they need to be able to explain why they are right and every scientist ever is completely wrong. As I've said before, it makes little difference what you believe, all that matters is what you can demonstrate or prove. Because unless you can demonstrate or prove that the Earth is 6,000 years old, then you're just relying on faith. Please subscribe. Hi, it's me, Creaky. Now, young earth creationism is a form of creationism which holds a central tenet that the earth and its life forms were created in their present forms by a supernatural act of the Abrahamic God between approximately 6,000 and 10,000 years ago. But everything that we know about the Earth and how it got here tells us a very different story. So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at which version of events is the most plausible. And who better to explain the position of a young Earth creationist to us than Ken Ham, Christian fundamentalist, Young Earth creationist, apologist, founder, CEO, and former president of Answers in Genesis, a Christian apologetics organization that operates the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter. So you know he's not just saying all this because it's the foundation of every single penny he earned. It's, it, it's usually always about uh, the age of the Earth. People actually want to talk to you about that thing we know is over 4 billion years old and you claim is only 6,000 years old because the only supporting evidence you and every young earth creationists ever present is the Bible. And as we all know, the Bible is not a science book. It's interesting, whenever they do articles in secular newspapers, uh, you'll often see where they say, oh, something about the Ark or the Creation Museum. This is the group headed by Ken Ham that believes in a young earth and that dinosaurs live with people and they don't believe in millions of years. Sounds fair to me, because that's exactly what you do believe. So it shouldn't come as a surprise to you that there are people out there that want to speak to you about it. And why add the word secular? Are you honestly expecting us to believe that the only reason these people are asking you about the age of the earth is because they're not connected to a church? How would you know that anyway? There are plenty of other religious organizations that disagree with young earth creationism, you know, about the age of the earth. So bringing that up just shows us that you're trying to act as if any religious person would believe your tosh. Which just isn't true. So they always seem to want to categorize us that way as if believing in a young earth means these people are nuts. That sounds fair as well. Because to believe something that is so easily able to be shown as a load of old crap is completely nuts. So if you want my opinion, which I'm sure you probably don't, but you're gonna get it anyway, I would say that's a pretty fair assessment of young earth creationism. You see, secularists believe in millions of years, and they have to. Yes, we do have to. And I'll tell you for why. It's because there is an overwhelming amount of evidence to support millions or even billions of years from many different sources. And as far as I can tell, young earth creationists have one source, the Bible. Actually, that's not strictly true, and I'm not a liar. But the reason I chose to omit the other things that young earth creationists think prove their belief is because it's creation science. <laughs> Sorry. Honestly, they literally have their own version of science which mysteriously fits perfectly with their version of how the Earth came into existence. You know why they have to? I just explained that, Ken. Pay attention. Because how do you get people to believe in an impossible process. Yeah, but that's for you to explain, isn't it? I mean, you are, after all, the ones claiming that a mystical being just decided one day to poof the world into existence, and none of you are even the slightest bit perturbed by the fact that there is absolutely zero evidence support in that. You all seem quite happy to just reference the Bible as if it holds the answers to every question you would ever need to ask. Because you don't see one kind of animal changing into another today. Ooh, someone's a fan of Kent Hovind, aren't they? Of course you don't. That isn't what evolution is or how it works. Evolution is the change in heritable characteristics of biological populations 
over successive generations. It takes a very long time for these changes to occur. All you are doing here is what every other young earth creationist does. You're trying to discredit the thing that shows your belief to be really stupid by trying to frame evolution as stupid itself. You're deliberately misrepresenting what evolution is. Which I suppose you have to, because there's nothing you can say or even pull from the Bible that is ever going to be able to prove your theory. Well, it isn't even a theory really, is it? It's a completely insane belief based on your own interpretation of a book that has nothing at all to do with fact. You don't see life producing new information to go into our genes. You don't, don't see matter producing life by natural processes. Yeah, but you don't see things just suddenly appear at the click of God's fingers either. But it doesn't stop you from believing that. So why is it so difficult for you to believe that things that can be shown to be true? It may be because if you were to acknowledge evolution as a fact, then it would completely destroy everything you believe in and have a huge financial impact on your business. Because your business is lying to people, isn't it? E evolution is an impossible process. How do you get people to believe in an impossible process? You have to get people to believe in an incomprehensible amount of time. Fine, I'll say it again. You don't seem to have any problem getting people to believe the impossible, so I fail to see your point. You keep saying believe in evolution, but once again, that isn't really how this works. We don't need to believe in evolution, we just need to look at the evidence there is for evolution and either accept or deny it. And why is 4.533 billion years incomprehensible? Are you not very good at counting? It's easy. They're just numbers. 4.533 billion comes just after 4.532 billion. Oh, and just before 4.534 billion. And I notice you labelled evolution as an impossible process, when I think what you meant to say was impossible process to explain away in favour of a bit of good old fashioned magic and myth. Because if you believe in an incomprehensible amount of time, given enough time, all the little changes we see, oh, they'll add up to the big changes for evolution. The reason you don't see it, oh, because it takes millions of years. Quite right. I've already said that though. To be fair, you are right. None of us were there to witness animals evolving over millions of years, which is why we're very lucky that that's what the evidence supports. Young Earth creationism, on the other hand, what supports what you believe? And don't say the Bible. I think we've already established that the Bible should not be used as evidence of anything, apart from the fact that people are willing to believe anything they think strengthens their position. And it's interesting, back in 1954, George Wald, an American biochemist who received the Nobel Prize, said this. The Nobel Prize has always confused me. If I was ever going to win it, I'd want the bell as well. It's not much of a prize without a bell, is it? Come on. Time is the hero of the plot. What we regard as impossible on the basis of human experience is meaningless here. Given so much time, the impossible becomes possible, the possible probable, the probable virtually certain. One only has to wait. Time itself perform, uh, performs the miracles. Now, I could be misunderstanding that, but let's assume I do understand it correctly. Wouldn't that statement mean that with the amount of time that has passed since the big G, created the Earth according to young Earth creationists, then you could have come up with at least one piece of evidence showing it to be true? You've completely lost me, Ken. And so, really, for the secularists, time is one of their gods. Should have seen that one coming, really. No, time isn't a god. We don't worship time, do we? This is merely a requirement for evolution to occur, because for there to be any noticeable changes in a species takes a very long time. So I can see why you would say we worship time like you worship God, is to try and discredit us. Again, think about this Mr. Ham, staying on the subject of time, even a broken clock is right twice a day. How many times have young earth creation has been shown to be right about anything? because it performs the miracles. It's not a miracle. It's changes that allow a species to be better suited to the environment it lives in, for example. And it's time that allows those changes to happen. You can have all the time you want, but you'll never find an example where matter produces brand new information to get added into the genome because natural selection, adaptation, acts on the genetic diversity already present in living uh, creatures. So you're saying that evolution isn't the real thing because you've never seen a new species of animal just suddenly pop into existence. That wouldn't be evolution anyway. That would be magic. 
which is what you believe in. This is just another example of you scrambling around trying to disprove evolution because it goes against your own ideas about how things are the way they are now. Nobody is saying that the changes we have evidence for over millions of years happened in five minutes. You need to make the people that buy into young earth creationism believe that in an effort to discredit the evidence that shows so elegantly how wrong you all are. In people's minds, if you've got enough time, anything can happen. It can, and it does. Which is why you and every other young earth creationist is hell-bent on trying to show your followers that the earth is only 6,000 years old by misrepresenting mainstream science and trying to portray the Bible as a literal or factual book when it isn't. And that's why, it's interesting, you take people like Richard Dawkins, that famous atheist. Why label him as that famous atheist? I wasn't aware that somebody could become famous for not believing in God. So he isn't a well-known evolutionary biologist and author, he's just famous for not believing in God. If I didn't know better, Ken, I would think you were trying to make out that his lack of belief is the only thing he has going for him. Or are you using atheist like a swear word? You know, to try and make the people listening to you dislike him based on what he doesn't believe. As if that somehow makes him underqualified to discuss evolution. It's pretty pathetic really, isn't it? And I've seen people interviewed by uh, him and seen him on panels and so on. If you say to him you don't believe in evolution, you don't believe people came from ape-like creatures, he'll mock you. And <laughs> I find that hard to believe. I mean what sort of ass would mock somebody just because they believe something you don't? <laughs> But you tell him you believe in a young earth, a young universe, and you reject millions of years, he'll, 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 he'll go berserk. Alright, bit strong. I've watched loads of Richard Dawkins stuff, and I don't recall ever seeing him go berserk. But if he has, and I missed it, does anyone have a link to that video? <laughs> no, he's probably just dumbfounded that there are actually people that don't believe what we now know to be true, and more importantly, is supported by pretty much every branch of science in one way or another because they have got to believe in millions of years if you don't, see think about it if they don't have millions of years they can't propose their evolutionary ideas well isn't it lucky for everyone that isn't a young earth creationist that there have been millions of years then because evolution takes a while you're even more obvious than kent hovind you are literally blaming the one thing you know makes your position completely impossible and offering no other argument at all. I get it. Nobody likes being told they're wrong or being proven to be stupid for believing in something impossible. But, come on, you've got to do better than this. Even I can see through it and I'm an idiot. We make no apology about the fact that we believe the Earth is only thousands of years old. In fact, I believe about 6,000 years old. And why would you? Because your belief is all you have. And isn't it curious that when young earth creationists are debating the subject, they are always trying to get evolutionists to say they believe that evolution is true. So that they can then go, aha, see, evolution is a religion. It's the same. And yet, as Mr. Ham just said, he believes that the Earth is 6,000 years old. Believing and having evidence for are not the same thing. Now, people say to me, where do you get the 6,000 from? Because you don't open up the Bible and it says the Earth is 6,000 years old. Damn, that's a really good question. And regrettably, one I've never thought to ask. Go on then, where do young Earth creationists get 6,000 years from? You're right, the Bible doesn't give a date for creation. If it did, that'd be a problem. You know why that'd be a problem? Because it would be billions of years earlier than you're trying to claim? Because the Bible was completed 2,000 years ago. Eh, yeah, airy muff. So if it gave a date for creation, it means the Bible would have a mistake in it and it would be fallible. You know how some people are funny even when they're trying not to be? Well, that's what just happened. Unless, of course, he's trying to be sarcastic. Of course the Bible has mistakes in it. The fact that it exists at all is a mistake, in my opinion. But I won't jump to any conclusions just yet. Why would it have mistakes if it said the age of the earth, Ken? Right. But the Bible does give us a very specific history where we can actually calculate the age of the universe. Ha! Snap! So does natural history, or evolution as you prefer to call it. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. I hope this isn't going to be the smoking gun that I don't know about, and I'm about to be completely destroyed by a man with a beard but no moustache. I've always found that weird. The Bible tells us God made everything in six days. Stop right there for a moment. Oh, I will. And I'm glad you offered to stop, because I have a question. If... 
God did create everything in six days, as young earth creationists believe. What the hell took him so long? I mean, he's all-powerful, isn't he? So why take six days? He can't have been busy doing anything else. Nothing else existed yet. Herein lies a major problem. People say, but, we, but those days could be millions of years. Those days could be long periods of time. Okay, well, just put that aside for the moment. Why? Because those people may have a point. If those days really were six 24-hour days, if God actually created in six 24-hour days, and on day six, he made Adam. Hang on just a second. He made Adam and dinosaurs on the same day. I hope he kept them separated. Imagine if he had made Adam and then dinosaurs together. What would have stopped the dinosaurs from just eating him? <laughs> that would have been awesome. God would have been like, oh, come on, T-Rex, I just made that. Where am I supposed to get more man parts from in the next five minutes? You Decosaurus Rex. And then we learn, as we read in the genealogies there, like in Genesis 5, we learn that uh, Adam had a son, Seth, at 130, and then Seth fathered, fathered Enosh at 105, and Enosh fathered Kenan at 90, and Kenan fathered, I don't know how to pronounce it, Mahalalel or whatever it is, at 70, and then he fathered Jared at 65, and Jared fathered Enoch at 162, and Enoch fathered Methuselah at 65, Methuselah fathered Lamech at 107, Lamech fathered Noah at 182, and so it goes on, and you've got those very specific genealogies, and you can add up all the dates. And when you do, and you get to Noah the flood, and then you get to Abraham, and from Abraham to Christ, and then from uh, the, the babe in a manger at that time to today adds up to about 6,000 years. And you believe that? Okay. Well, at least we know now, I suppose. And by we, I mean me. So we know now that the earth is only 6,000 years old because of interbreeding and old people sex. Thanks for watching, everybody. Love you, bye. All right, all right, watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe. By order of the creaky blinder.